Ah, the noughties. They were the best of horror, they were the worst of horror, and both started off and killed a whole bunch of trends in just one short decade. The zombie genre rose from the grave and found footage shook our screens like nothing else. Blood-soaked, torture-laden films such as Hostel and Saw were big hits, sparking all sorts of Gorno-themed movies. There were a slew of remakes of 70s and 80s classics, and Twilight came out to give vampires their time in the sun once again. For every big hit, however, there were a whole host of films that came and went without getting their deserved look in. Whether it be due to unfairly middling reviews, production company issues, or just plain bad luck, some films simply fell through the cracks. So let's rectify that by sharing the love to some criminally underrated titles. Of course, this is by no means an exhaustive list, so feel free to add your own picks in the comments section too. I am the overrated Ash from What Culture Horror, and these are 10 underrated horror movie gems from the 2000s. 10. The Backwoods, 2006 not exactly the best advertisement for a Spanish holiday, The Backwoods follows two married couples spending time in an isolated woodland home. It's 1978 in the Basque Country, northern Spain, where Englishman Paul brings his Spanish wife Isabel, English pal Norman, and his wife Lucy to his grandmother's old home. Initially a curious drama about two very different married couples, The Backwoods quickly degenerates into fearsome fare when Paul and Norman discover a deformed girl in the woods. Locked away in an abandoned building, they make the inevitably catastrophic decision to bring her back to their house. Reminiscent of rustic nightmare flicks such as Deliverance, The Backwoods delves into the fears of being an outsider in an increasingly hateful wilderness. Packed with disturbing scenes and woodland chases, the film expertly creates slow-burning tension. Increasingly bleak and disquieting, The Backwoods ends on a vicious bang rather than the dreaded whimper of many weaker-paced horror flicks out there. A must-watch for fans of terror in the great outdoors. 9. The Girl Next Door, 2007 Jack Ketchum's disquieting novel makes for one of the grimmest entries on this or any other list, with the harrowing story inspired by the unspeakably evil 1965 murder of Sylvia Likens. A hellish look into the worst of suburban crime, the film adaptation of The Girl Next Door follows a grown man's recollections of the crimes he witnessed as a teenager in 1958. His first ever teenage crush, Meg, gradually becomes a victim of all manner of sadistic abuse at the hands of her aunt, Ruth. The film starts on a dark note, and only gets lower from there. Its depictions of torture are among some of the most horrific put to film, made worse by the gritty, realistic atmosphere that permeates throughout. Devoid of any humour or hope, the film is made all the more unnerving by its links to true crime. Unflinching in its depiction of some of the worst cruelty recent history has to offer, The Girl Next Door is definitely not for the faint of heart. There's a reason this one isn't as well known a title from the noughties. 8. Left Bank, 2008 Marie, a track star with European Championship ambitions, comes down with a severe immune disorder. With her dream sabotaged and her life suddenly in disarray, she decides to move in with her charming new boyfriend, Bobby. Bobby lives in a lush apartment in the Left Bank area of Antwerp. The building proves to have a complicated and disturbing history, with Marie growing obsessed with a still missing former tenant. With a suitably spooky, often quiet first half, the film builds superbly to its wild, twist-filled finale. Often disorienting and disturbing, thanks to its offbeat dream sequences, the film is reminiscent of David Lynch's surrealist fair throughout, with the delirious style of these scenes blending nicely with the increasingly otherworldly storyline. Well received in Belgium at the time of its release, debut director Peter Van Hees does a great job of blending together several sinister film styles to bring life to his vision. Sadly, despite this incredibly promising start, Van Hees has done little since. 7. Highwaymen, 2004 Robert Harmon returns to the road trip horror subgenre he all but invented with the 1986 classic The Hitcher. Bringing composer Mark Isham back with him, Harmon provides an action packed chiller that lacks the nuisance of his earlier film. Rennie is a widower out to avenge his murdered wife. The killer is a psychotic serial killer with a 1972 Cadillac Eldorado he uses as his weapon of choice. More of a crasher than a slasher, if you will, and Rennie closes in on him just as he is picking a new victim. The action scenes are exceptionally well choreographed throughout, allowing the viewer to see into the chaos without endless shaky cam and quick cuts. While the film lacks the ambiguity and originality of The Hitcher, it remains an entertaining chase, and still one worthy of a watch for those of you that like your horror with a dose of petrol. Shot at breakneck pace, the film whizzes by as quickly and angrily as the killer's dreaded murder car. 6. Meatball Machine, 2005 
This splatterific sci-fi chiller is based on a 70-minute original, but 2005's Meatball Machine greatly expands in a bigger budget update that births the Necroborgs, humans turned into biomechanical monsters. All of the special effects, makeup, and Necroborg molds were crafted by acclaimed effects whiz Yoshihiro Nishimura. Nishimura would move on to eye-popping features such as Tokyo Gore Police and the Machine Girl in the years after. Main characters Yoji and Sachiko are tragically doomed would-be lovers, both leading lonesome lives as factory workers. When Yoji discovers an insect-like alien, he and everyone else is in for a particularly bad time, and one that is stuffed to the gills with gore, of course. A gross body horror wrapped up in a sad romantic drama, Meatball Machine delivers the goods in both mayhem and character development. The metamorphosis the lead characters go through leave them looking somewhere between zombies and transformers, which I don't think could be more of a sales pitch if it tried. What more could you want? 5. The House of the Devil, 2009 Released in 2009, so just sneaking into this list in time, The House of the Devil is a film that settles into that sweet spot of 80 slashers without exploiting nostalgia to an unpleasant degree, reveling in its style and delivering a tightly wound horror film that does what it says on the tin. Depicting a babysitter roped into a last-minute job for a wealthy client, Samantha arrives at the home only to find out it is not a child she'll be taking care of for the evening, and that the night strangely corresponds with a lunar eclipse too. Building up tension slowly and surely before exploding into full satanic panic, The House of the Devil has had many positive reviews, but still remains widely underseen for the quality of movie that it pumps out. Underrated in views, this is one that should shoot straight onto your watch list if you haven't indulged yet. 4. The Exorcism of Emily Rose 2005 Yes, this is one that's a bit more well-known, but it's still one that deserves a pushback into mainstream memory since it so often gets forgotten in the slew of possession movies we've been stuck with. The Exorcism of Emily Rose follows an agnostic defense attorney representing a parish priest accused of negligent homicide in the wake of performing an exorcism. During the trial, the exorcism and its preceding events are revealed through flashback. Actress Jennifer Carpenter does an exceptional job of capturing the deteriorating state of the titular character. Physically demanding and hectic, Carpenter captures the pain, torment, and contortions, predominantly done without the aid of many special effects, of what we have come to expect from the demonically possessed in cinema brilliantly. Blending dramatic courtroom drama with high-intensity, old-school scares, The Exorcism of Emily Rose functions admirably as both a meditation on faith and as a piece of horror. And it comes as a reflection of a true story, too. Ooh. 3. The Woods, 2006 the moral to this story is a rather obvious one. Do not commit arson. Set in 1965, The Wood follows teenager Heather and her move to a private all-girls boarding school after the aforementioned fire starting. An almost immediate victim of bullying from her peers and the strict rules enforced by staff, unease is built before the real horror even begins. Soon after joining, Heather begins to discover the presence of an ancient evil infesting the school and endangering everyone within. A stylish, suitably macabre homage to earlier private school set horrors such as Even the Wind is Afraid and Suspiria, The Woods is a slow burn chiller with a frenzied third act. The plot grows increasingly fantastical but never loses track of itself, instead staying true to its genre roots and themes throughout. Wonderfully atmospheric, director Lucky McKee supplies a tightly wound, well-polished horror treat. The Woods sadly wound up going straight to DVD with nary a notice thanks to some studio deals messing up release schedules, which is why it is not often mentioned. Two. Brotherhood of the Wolf, 2001. Set in 18th century France, Brotherhood of the Wolf takes a dive into the province of Gévaudan. There, they are to investigate the bizarre mass slaughter of hundreds by a mysterious and monstrous entity. The plot borrows from several real-life curiosities in France at the time, including an actual series of killings and the Beast of Gévaudan. Legend goes that the Beast of Gévaudan was an enormous, wolf-like creature that terrorized the province for several years, killing hundreds and leading to numerous investigations. A cocktail of many film genres, Brotherhood of the Wolf both both martial arts and swashbuckling action scenes throughout. It is an epic, highly ambitious piece of genre-breaking cinema. Brotherhood of the Wolf has something for everyone thanks to its action, humor, and historical setting, but it's a thick vein of horror that is impossible to resist. 1. Inside, 2007 a prime example of France's relentless new wave of horror cinema, Inside is about as scary as modern horror gets. A pregnant widow lives alone on Christmas Eve, mourning the death of her husband four months prior. A dark time already, it only gets worse when a scissor-wielding stranger turns up at her door, hell-bent on taking the unborn baby. 
What follows is a night of torment and terror that will leave many viewers badly rattled. Initially a sad drama centered on grief, Inside quickly turns into the kind of horror one watches through their hands. The intensity and cruelty displayed throughout this film will leave many pausing to simply try and comprehend what they are watching. Among the scariest, most disquieting films of the 21st century so far, Inside has received both praise and condemnation for its brutal story and antics, but not nearly enough considering its contribution to new French extremity. A masterpiece of unpleasantness, Inside deserves far more recognition as a modern horror classic. And that's our list. What other Naughty's gems deserve more? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash, over on social media, at Ash Millman, and this has been What Culture Horror. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back again soon for some more spine-tingling horror content. Thanks for watching.